Today, Iranistas is pleased to bring you an interview with Dario Safai. She is a tireless women's rights activist, civil rights activist, and human rights activist. She was in the forefront of the 1999 student uh, protests at Tehran University, where she was arrested, imprisoned, and finally, while on furlough from prison, she and her husband were able to flee Iran for Belgium, where they live now. In 2015, Daria launched a marvelous campaign entitled Let Iranian Women Enter Their Stadiums. Though many women throughout the world are able to go to stadiums to participate as fans and viewers in the sports matches of their national teams, Iranian women are prohibited from doing so. So with this small campaign, with this small seed of an idea, Darya is able to bring awareness to the issue of gender apartheid and the Sharia laws under which Iranian women have to contend on a daily basis. Darya, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to jump right into it and um, ask you about your recent trip to Italy. I believe you were in Rome and you had gone to participate as a viewer in one of the volleyball matches between Iran and Italy. Can you give us a little detail on what happened there? Yeah, sure. Uh, when we went to Italy, like always, we had a lot of t-shirts um, and the banners, which uh, on it, it's written, let Iranian women enter the stadiums. And uh, we do the same action uh, such as several years, and the same thing, very supporting from people, uh, from Iranian uh, who were there, and also a lot of Italian. And uh, once gets into the stadium, so we went to sit in our uh, place, which is, of course, in front of the cameras, because I think it's really important that uh, the people of the world, they know about uh, this awful uh, situation and discrimination of Iranian women in the uh, 21st century, which they are not able to take a seat in the stadiums and watch the uh, program uh, watch the match inside the stadiums like you know today uh, again the, there is uh, tickets which are free for the world league of volleyball again on the side women unfortunately cannot buy the tickets so that's why we went and sit in front of the cameras where our seat is like always we had two big banners with the same message and we were happy to get it in the camera. Uh, suddenly after 10 minutes we saw the uh, um, uh, security police and the police of the Italy came to us and uh, they asked me to keep the banner away and they said uh, you cannot keep it in front of the camera. This is a political message which is ridiculous because this is absolutely not a, a political message. This is about human rights and I told them several times this is very important, this is about women's rights, and this is not at all political. And the reason, uh, one more reason, is that they say, you can go and sit with your banner on the other corner, but not in front of the camera. But they told me again that this is the FIVB, the Fed International Federation of Volleyball, which asked them to come and uh, take me away. What it costs doesn't matter, but I should go out of the eyes of the camera. And they told me that this is on demand of Islamic Republic of Iran, and they uh, threat if Dario Safai doesn't go out of the camera, we are going to stop the broadcasting, and the responsible is the Italian police then. So that was the reason that they wanted to uh, take me away, but I didn't went with them, and then they began to be more and more like something around 15, between 15 and 20 policemen, which really um, aggressively and with a lot of... Um, uh, they took me um, out of the um, uh, stadium.
And the policeman, they told me that it is on demand of FIVB, which they took me outside, which they should took me, take me out uh, of the stadium. And uh, the FIVB told them that it is um, Islamic Republic of Iran, which demands absolutely that I should go out of the eyes of the camera because otherwise they cannot broadcast it inside Iran. And um, I thought, how is it possible that the policemen of Italy will become a sort of instrument of oppression of a woman who has just a banner with a positive message and very peaceful message? Uh, this protest is always a peaceful uh, way. How is it possible that the uh, Italian police wants to take me out? And I resist it, like always, because I, I think uh, this is my right to seat to sit on uh, my own seat that I, I uh, prepared and I told them uh, I refused to go out and that was uh, why they tried to uh, pull me uh, and drag me out of the stadium. They were like um, um, between 15 and 20 uh, policemen when I resisted they took me just with uh, uh, aggressivity uh, out of the stadium and they uh, threw my banners in pieces uh, because um, they didn't want me back inside the stadium. And uh, like 20 policemen were around me uh, and I was sitting uh, on the ground because they didn't want me to move anywhere. That's the, the way that they, they um, oppressed uh, an Iranian woman and an, a very peaceful um, action for the women's rights in Iran. Wasn't it a couple of years ago when the uh, director of the Volleyball Federation, a Mr. Ari Gracha, um, issued a statement in support of Iranian women and uh, basically stood shoulder to shoulder with the women who wanted to enter uh, the stadiums? What happened there? How come the Volleyball Federation has now backpedaled and decided to abandon their support for Iranian women's uh, entering the stadiums? Exactly. Not only Ari Gracha from Volleyball uh, Federation, but also um, Boricic from uh, World League of Volleyball. They supported the Iranian women and they supported my campaign. Um, but unfortunately, that is three years ago. After that, uh, there are the things behind the curtains uh, that we don't know what is it about. But uh, somehow Islamic Republic of Iran has told the things that um, the FIVB has changed uh, its way to go with the uh, women's rights in Iran. And unfortunately, in 2015, um, they told that um, we cannot dictate the cultural paradigms of a country. Um, but this is against the, their own statutes. Uh, with uh, uh, ban any sort of discrimination in the stadiums. They don't respect their own statue and they say we cannot uh, dictate uh, cultural paradigms. This is not about cultural paradigms. First of all, it is not about the culture of Iranian. Uh, like you know, until four years ago, women of Iran could attend the match inside the stadiums in the volleyball games. And at the, la uh, at the last years, they were like one third of the Azadi Stadium with a capacity of 12,000 people. And there were no problem at that moment. That was four years ago. So we don't have any cultural problem with it. This is about oppression and the way that Islamic Republic of Iran uh, obliged the women to, to behave. And this is what uh, Federation, International Federation of Volleyball doesn't want to see. They close their eyes. They know about it. They know that it's not our culture. But they want to believe that Islamic Republic of Iran is right. Even the people of the Federation um, in the Italy, when they talked, uh, they, they said the Islamic Republic of Iran says that uh, we should not pay attention to those women. Most of the women in Iran doesn't want to attend the game and they don't, they are happy with it. Those are the things that are happening. And this is our job to make the world um, uh, know the things about Iranian women and our rights. Every woman has, should have the right to, to sit in a stadium and also Iranian women. What do you think motivates these countries' officials, uh, like the Brazilians at the Olympics or the Italians, uh, 
last week when you were, were there. Why do you think they take the Islamic regime's side against Iranian activists who simply want to do something that in those Western countries is normal? I cannot say exactly what is going on, but just what I am seeing that it, they are not more supporting Iranian women. They are not more against that awful, um, um, ugly form of discrimination, which is against their own statues. Um, I cannot t tell you which advantages they uh, have from Islamic Republic of Iran to act such a thing, but I'm just uh, telling you that they are closing their eyes and they don't uh, they are not more interested but they forget something the history knows very well about uh, the how they treat today the Iranian women how they are collaborating FIVB the International Federation of Volleyball is collaborating Islamic Republic of Iran for oppressing and suppressing the Iranian women keeping them outside and oppression of the women rights activists which only ask FIVB to respect their own statutes not more just to respect uh, that they say and they believe in equality that they show it you know, and the, in the history, uh, years ago in South Africa, um, the Olympic Committee didn't want to attend the Games in South Africa because it was about uh, racial apartheid. But what I'm asking is why when it comes to gender apartheid in Iran and, and uh, other countries like Saudi Arabia, uh, Arabia Saudi Arabia, why are they closing the eyes on this sort of um, apartheid? That's the question, and they should answer it. Otherwise, the history will judge them. Can you also give us an update on FIFA, the football or soccer federation? I believe there was a, a, a lady there who headed up the Asia and Middle East uh, division of uh, FIFA, and she had met with several of the Iranian activists and was very supportive of the issue. Can you give us an update on that? Unfortunately, um, in the sport in the sport world, there is not a really serious action against such a uh, system uh, against this discrimination. What, what we are seeing is that we have never heard a statement, a, a ob an obvious statement which asks the Islamic Republic of Iran, or you do it right now, or you cannot be uh, a, a member of us anymore. If Iran wants to keep uh, uh, himself in the international world, then they should uh, adapt themselves. They should act like other country they act. This is something very clear, very simple, but the sport world, I have never seen um, one or other federation which gives attention to it. Like you remember some month ago, um, there was a, um, a one of our champions and the chess, uh, one of our chess player, which didn't cover her hair outside Iran, and she was banned playing for our national team. And no one, not a federation, uh, they talk about it. This sort of discrimination are just uh, ignored. They are just fighting for the right of uh, covering the hair uh, of the uh, athletes. But they don't see the one who doesn't want to cover their hair, but they are banned. Daria, thank you so much for joining us. I look forward to having you on much more. I look forward to getting your updates. And I thank you for your tireless effort and your incredible energy in bringing awareness to such an incredible and important issue on behalf of all of us Iranian women. Thank you. Thank you very much for your program.